All right, and we are here with this short video to go over the Rites of War for the Salamanders, which was a legion that we've just been talking about now. As we've done for all of our other Rites of War, we're going to do a brief refresher in case you either haven't watched the main video we put out for a while or just didn't watch it at all. If you didn't, please go back and watch it or listen to it if you're on a podcatcher. Um, once we get through that, we're going to talk about the Rites of War. In particular, we always mention limitations first because we like to make sure we figure out what's going to restrict us before we get excited about what we get. And in particular, for these ones, there's also a psychic discipline that only applies in the Rites of War, so we're going to talk about it there. But Dan said he would do the refresher, so get to it. Yep, so refresher on these guys. Um, essentially, they get bonuses, or rather reductions to any incoming fire um, from Plasma, Volkite, Flamers. So they're a little bit tougher on that regard where they you're minus one to wound them melt as well um their advanced reaction essentially was plus one weapon skill and plus one strength you can hurt yourself if and you plus one six. attack and plus one attack apologies oh, yeah. uh you can hurt yourself if you roll a six but it's a good defensive or offensive hell if you want an offensive you can as well but it's a great offensive slash defensive tool that can hurt you but it's it's really powerful and their units their units were really great um Fire Drakes were just a solid hammer unit. Pyro class are a great fire support unit that you don't want to charge. Their special characters were, um, they were there. <laughs> they exist. Uh, Xyphus Jur was pretty much the one we kind of agreed was the best one out of the, uh, out of the troops or out of the, uh, the guys, but, um, just an overall solid Legion, an overall solid Legion. So, uh, yeah, let's start with these rights of war. All right, Steve wanted to take the Covenant of Fire, and they're the first ones listed. Yep. So the Covenant of Fire, I love the Salamanders' rights of war because they they embrace the fluff of my legion is wrecked, and now I'm kind of soul-searching for what I'm going to do because as far as we know, our Primarch is probably dead. So, um, Covenant of Fire, they kind of like, they kind of like, I'm going to become a warrior mystic and just debate what the universe is about. But when I get angry, I'm going to... Limitations first. Detaches the right to war may not make a deep strike assault. And use it units that must deploy that way cannot be taken. However, you can still do subterranean assaults. Oh yeah. And mm. flanking assaults. So you can absolutely take your uh, subterranean assault drills. And you could absolutely do it outflank with the land speeder, for example. So yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. I mean, it sucks you can't deep strike, deep strike, but it's okay. Um, next up. You cannot include Legion Destroyer Assault Squads, Legion Mortalis Destroyer Squads, or Legion Turns that are more attacks. Standard Salamander's fair right there. Finally, you must include a Legion Centurion, Cataphracty Centurion, or Tartarus Centurion with the Legion Champion Console Upgrade. So someone's got a champion in your cause here. What do we get for these? We'll call them trade-offs. You get Pyroclasts and Tactical Support Squads armed exclusively with Dragon's Breath Flamers, so any Pyroclast and Flamer Tactical Supports, may be taken as troops, and they gain the Line Subtype. <laughs> yeah. That's, that, that's as fun as you think it is. Everything's Sorry. gonna burn! I want to stop laughing, to stop laughing hold on. <laughs> And then, Legion Predator Squads, composed entirely of models with only Dragon's Breath Cannons, and Dragon's Breath Heavy Flamers as weapons. They chose as non-compulsory troops. <laughs> That's actually... I, I, we haven't seen many where they mix up both infantry and, and tanks tank. into like the same... like Essentially, the troop slot. This is one of the few ones that I can think of that does that. That's actually really cool. So what you're telling me is take drills with multiple pyroclasts that can you, now score... I have bad news. You cannot do that. They do not have drill access needed. So nope. then how do you subterranean assault? Uh, veteran squads can take them. Yeah. Of the you remaining unit units in the roster, to take a drill. it's only veteran squads and breacher squads that could take them. Yep. The... Nonetheless, okay. you might want to do that because it's a lot of fun. So send drills to cause chaos in the middle, and then pyroclasts will roll up in their land raiders. Or rhinos. Yeah. Although I would not put pyroclasts in pyroclasts and rhinos i have seen rhinos explode and then the owning player rolling a bunch of ones and then the strength eight doubles them out and they lose very pricey models very easily at least the Agreed. land raider they have to work a little harder to explode it yeah and and 
since you can take predators and and now the predators release is not released with the, the the essentially the flamestorm weapon but at some point they will but now they actually have yep. predators so now you can run this fully in plastic um at least those and that gives you another a bit of target priority because yes i have this land raider but i also have these other vehicles rushing up with it everyone's mm -hmm. hitting you with fire um that's about the only way i think you should take flames on predator type things because that also spits it out 18 inches yeah which means i don't even have to actually get close Technically, it's 18 plus the 8.5 inch flavor. 8.24. But yeah. Um, yes, yeah, nuts. Another thing to note on the thought. Of... <laughs> um, oh, yes. Predators. Ball predators. The Blood Angels iconography is yeah. not attached to the front of the rhino. It's only on the weapon casings for the flamers and the top mount flamers. So if you don't want to wait for the new kit to come out, you could just pick up a bunch of ball predators and use those because they yeah. have the Inferno Cannon option for the turret and mm. heavy flame responses. Yeah, oh, that would nice. actually work really well. You could shave off some iconography or do something like that, and then you're all set. Yep. And, and let's face it, for, we don't know how they're going to... The, the other kit hopefully will have the flamer options as well. We don't know how it's going to look, so, and we don't know when it would be. It's probably going to be another month or two out, and because they'll probably do it the same way they did the Leviathans, where after like a month or two, they give you the other kit and then they give you an upgrade sprue. Yeah. I'd probably just go get some ball predators because you could also probably get them off of, you know, either it's a your local rough store aftermarket or for the parts. It's, oh, but, is it? I wasn't yeah. sure if it was you're better rough off for that just or just getting ball, a ball predators predator. entirely. Just get a well, ball predator entirely because it's like, I think the cheapest I saw it was like twenty bucks for the weapon options. No, no, I would probably. If your local, you know, go to your local store, of course, obviously yeah. support your local stores. But at some point, you can't necessarily get everything from them. For some of those, you could even look at other online options to just buy the whole kit because you might be able to find some good deals on the kit. Yeah. And you could probably convert the Land Raider Redeemer Sponsons to fit onto Predator Mount with a little bit of knife work. Oh, well, that's a more ugly option. Honestly, at that point, just use Styrene and make it from scratch. Yeah. But yeah, no. Right. Um, Fun right of war. Yeah, a nice Great. and simple one. Line pyroclast squads are kind of terrifying because it's like, yeah, yeah I yeah. got two wounds, a two up save, and a five up involved against most things I'm afraid of in the shooting phase. Come at yep. me. And they also dunk on um blood angels that run perdition weapons because they're all flame type. Yeah. All right. Um, That gives us a nice and straightforward right of war. So Dan is going to cover their psychic discipline they get because that's going to come up in the other right of war that I'm going to discuss. But we're going to talk about the discipline first. So when we reference how it's used, we have an idea of what they actually get for the people who are allowed to have it. All right, so let's do this. So I was hoping, by the way, that the special character got this discipline because I was kind of previewing it before I wanted to talk about it. And yep. it's really nope. cool. Yeah, it's really cool. So it is called Fury of the Salamander. And of course, you get etheric lightning. Um, <laughs> so you have two powers, as always. You have this, the shooting power and the normal power. So at the normal power, the sixth power is at the start of uh, no, sorry, at the start of their own player turn, the controlling player of the psyker with this power may choose to make a psychic check. If the check is successful, then all enemy models within eighteen inches of the psyker treat all open terrain as difficult terrain. And all difficult terrain is both difficult and dangerous terrain until the start of the sacred player's next turn. However, you may not move, shoot, or charge. Um, if the check has failed, you suffer perils of the warp, but you may otherwise do normal things. Um, and I'll read the other power before I go back and talk about it. So yeah. shooting power, ugh, this one is, okay. It's a psychic weapon. It's psychic focus. You have to take a test. It's template, so it's a flavor template. Strength 7 AP 4 me assault one pinning deflagrate and shell shock three strength seven eight before is not bad there's nothing wrong with that i'm wounding people on twos usually yeah, i was gonna say i don't give a shit about the strength seven. it's the pinning deflagrate and also shell uh, deflagrate i don't even care about either pinning and shell shock three is insane that's that's nuts i don't They're think it's the, high, they get I think a it's the highest shell shock in the game yeah i haven't seen and anything out of four the, high, the next highest is like you take uh, rotor cannons with that weird Thousand Suns librarian that can like give it an extra like shell shock or something, but that's shell shock too. 
I I'm sure there's mean, something else that shell shock three. I just don't know what, but there's probably somewhere. Titan it's Wax of are? Fear. That's probably what you're thinking of. Yeah, this is this is. So first of all, the the Salamander's Fury. Um, I actually kind of like this, believe it or not. Um, Why wouldn't you like it? It's really good. Good. You can't move or shoot, right? But if you're on an objective and you don't want that person coming near you, boom, you kind of just do this. What I really would love to see, Dave, is someone mm -hmm. take this psychic power and also the pyromancy power, putting down three large blasts and then casting this and making all of those large blasts now dangerous terrain. Yeah. Like that's a nice little wombo combo in my opinion. And th the other useful part to it is, okay, you can't move. You don't have to put it on a unit that cares to move. Th the guy who has this could potentially be standing in a unit that wants to stay on its position, not even necessarily an objective. You know, it could just be a, a shooting unit. Yeah. Maybe I'm using this more defensively for when you're trying to get to my backfield to take out my stuff that either scores 18. or is hitting you from a distance. And 18 inches is such a long, like that's, that's massive. Jeez. Yeah. And then the psychic weapon is great. Pinning shell shock three is nuts. Yeah. No, it, it's, it's overall strong for what it does. And it gives you some nice options, which is good. Um, so let's take a look at what this right of war is that uses that. So again, we're going to start with limitations. Um, if you're using this right of war, um, the detachment may include no more than one unit composed of models with a cavalry unit subtype um, or just have a unit type. This does not include a legion apothecary detachments or legion tech marines that include models that have the upgrade to cavalry. So if you put them on a bike, that doesn't count, but just essentially normal cavalry units. It may not include any models that have a Warhawk jump pack. So no jump packs, only one cav unit. Um, attachment using this right of war must include at least one Legion Centurion with the Chaplain console upgrade. Okay. Um, very similar to what the other one ended up requiring. That one was a champion. This one's a chaplain instead. And you can't have Vulcan in here because this is after Vulcan for, for their purposes. They thought he was dead or has disappeared. So what you get for all of this, all models that are both infantry and and salamanders in the in a unit selected as part of the detachment using this right of war may be given fear one for 20 points per unit so you can make your guys scary okay does that stack with shell shock yes it does yes as long as you're not in <laughs> close combat oh yes it yeah, can't be in close combat if you're in close combat it yeah. only affects the unit that's in the close combat um, all models that are both infantry and salamanders in the detachment using the right of war ignore all modifiers to their leadership when making pinning tests. So you, you essentially shell shock doesn't affect you at all. Other things don't either for pinning base, but no shell shock for you. All models in this detachment using this right of war that are the psyker unit <laughs> subtype may choose to take the fury of the salamander discipline instead of any others they can. So this is how you get the discipline. You have to take a psyker. And they can choose this instead of one of the core disciplines from the book. Last thing, a detachment uses right of war gains a single additional non-compulsory HQ choice that may only be used to select a Legion Centurion with a Chaplain Console upgrade. That is awesome. Remember, that they have to yeah. take a Chaplain, so but he won't count for your HQ choices. And I was just going to say, that sucks. If you, you don't want to. Take... Well, no, it's not that. I was going to say, oh, that sucks. You can only really take one Librarian because you kind of want a Praetor. Because you have to unlock the right of war. You're forced yep. to take a chaplet or centurion. Oh, okay, so you only have one librarian. This is awesome. So you can literally yep. take a praetor, two librarians, and a chaplain because you have that extra non-compulsory HQ choice. That's awesome. Yeah, they, they give you a lot of good here. So, I mean, if, if you like the psychic power, here's the one way you're going to get it. And if you like it, you could take two copies of it. And you could really, at, at an, what is it, 18-inch bubble? 18-inch bubbles, you could be covering... That's Most, the whole board. I would say it's not the whole board. Well, it's not it's, necessarily depending on positions. Yeah. Um. It would. I would say, it would be tough to truly necessarily cover the entire board, but you're covering all the board that matters. You know, if you go somewhat near the middle and you space these guys out, you're covering everywhere everyone's going to be, except for maybe right along a back edge kind of thing. Um, or as Dan said, you could take it with pyromancy because that fits perfectly. And you could just make where people are inside of this one bubble much, much worse. Because maybe there's not a lot of difficult terrain on your board. You know, most of your uh, uh, terrain will be, but maybe there's not a lot else. Well, hey, there's a nice way to get a little extra. And you 
you know, I, I don't know if I would worry so much about the fear for 20 points each, mostly because I'm already running points heavy in HQs because I have to run the chaplain. If you're taking this right of war, you honestly probably want, you know, two librarians, either for two copies of this or this with something else. Like you're taking it probably for a reason and you need a praetor or like a delegate. So you need something to be able to take the right of war. So your, your HQs are going to be heavy. I don't know if I want to spend an extra 20 points on infantry units to give them fear. Like, yeah, I'll pin better. But the part where I know at least that I'm pinning for sure is Shell Shock 3, I got to hope that does enough for me. And that's only one I, shot anyway. And the pyromancy skill is, you know, you drop it on a squad, right? It becomes mm-hmm. dangerous and difficult. The moment they move in that, it's a strength six hit for everyone yes. inside that circle. So <laughs> they're and it's dangerous. Six, so then they're also rolling a D6 it's, it's one on one. Exactly. Yeah. I, I, I like this a lot. This is a nice little wombo combo. This is a cool yeah. one. It's good. It doesn't. It doesn't do much more for you. You not getting a minus on your pinning test could be cool, or it might be nothing because if your web enemy's not pinning you, who cares? Getting the fear again, cool if you want to do it. May, maybe I might do the fear on my one unit that is going to be going up the board. Maybe I don't know on my fire drakes or something like that because that way, even if they get into combat, helps me win the combat. But it's the other two things. It gives you a really cool discipline and it lets you take more psychers with another character than you naturally would. Yeah. Any other thoughts on that one? Those are easy. Straight no, they're forward. straightforward. They're great. I mean, yeah. there's really nothing more to say about it. All right. Well, that'll do it for us for their rights of war.